Hello, and welcome to Finding God's Way. Have you ever thought about death? What is death really? Is death final? Is there anything after we die? How, are we asleep or are we uh, conscious? What's going on? There's lots of questions about that. You know, That's what the lesson is about today is death. What does it really mean? <clears throat> There is one that has power of death, and that's the devil. And then mentioned in Hebrews chapter two, uh, two and verse fourteen, he has the power of death. But Christ, when he was manifested in the flesh, and then he was died and was risen again, defeated the devil in death. He conquered death, and we too will conquer death in Christ Jesus, and it will have no effect over us. But what is death? The Bible is very distinct in helping us to understand that death is not the, the concept of the world has of it as it being a finality and <clears throat> an annihilation or just ceasing to exist and not, not being aware of anything. It is not anything like that at all. As a matter of fact, uh, death is pronounced in the New Testament, the word is koima. Koima is uh, the original uh, uh, word meaning to sleep. We have uh, uh, koimo minan, koimo minan. It's hard to say that word, uh, but it means to uh, to sleep, to uh, fall asleep, like what we would think about going to bed at night. Uh, koimao is the root of that word, the meaning to sleep. Uh, or to put to sleep. And we find that mentioned in 1 Thessalonians 4, verse 13. Uh, koimetrion is the word for cemetery, meaning a place to sleep. You know, the, the Greek, and God was very wise in using that as uh, the original language. This meaning is not going to change. And he wants us to understand that death is not final. See, when you go to sleep, you wake up again. We're going to be resurrected all mankind is going to be resurrected, some to the resurrection of life, some to the resurrection of eternal damnation. But we're all going to be resurrected. We're all going to fall asleep. So appointed man wants to die and then the judgment. You're going to go to sleep and then you're going to face God when the time comes. And you're going to face judgment for what you've done in this body. Not hard to understand that. Uh, God, the Lord himself uses the word uh, koimao or to sleep. In reference to John uh, to Lazarus in John chapter eleven verses eleven through fourteen, uh, in the Old Testament it's used to, to describe <clears throat> men who have died. Job three thirteen, Daniel twelve verse two, Genesis forty seven verse thirty, and Second uh, Samuel seven and twelve, just to name a few. The Bible is very clear that death is not final. It's final in the sense that you can no longer change your destiny. But we will be resurrected from the dead. Death is not soul sleeping. Your your spirit, your soul does not go to sleep. See, we're made in the image of God. We are a spirit. We live in a fleshly body that he created from the dust of this world. And Genesis tells us that God created man from the dust of the earth. And he blew into his nostrils. He became a living soul. We, Our flesh became alive and a place for our spirit to abide. Not hard to understand that. And we know this because the scriptures tell us that the Spirit is given to us by God. And it will return to God when we go to sleep. When we die, that's the term we use in this world, when we die and our body goes to sleep, 
our spirit will return to God who gave it. We can find we know this happens because the scriptures tell us that's what happens. Matter of fact, Ecclesiastes chapter twelve and verse seven clearly states that our spirit returns to him who gave it, who is God, and our body will return to the dust. Uh, the body returns to the dust and the spirit back to God. So how how is that, that hard to difficult or difficult to understand? It's not, is it? You just need to let it lie and take it for what it says. And Luke chapter 16 clearly describes to us that we are conscious after death. The rich man died, and so did Lazarus. Both of them died, and the rich man in torment, because he had lived an evil life, he was not a good man, looked up from his torments and saw Lazarus in Abraham's bosom being comforted. He wanted to come back to this world and warn his brothers. But... We're shown in this terrible that there's a gulf fixed that no one can pass. No one from there can come here and no one from here can go there. Because one is spiritual and one is physical is why. Not hard to understand these things. We need to let God, through his scriptures, explain this to us. Death is not final. It is a going to sleep. We're, we're going to rest. Our bodies will rest. And it will return to the dust from which it came. Our spirit will go to be with the Lord, where, and our destiny is sealed at that time. We will know if we're going to heaven or hell. We still are going to face the judgment, but we're consciously aware of where we are and what's going on as far as our realm, what we are. We won't be able to know what's happening here, but we will know where we are and what's going on where we are. Uh <clears throat> As the dead who are at uh, home in the Lord, they're going to be present with the Lord. And for that Corinthians 5 and verse 8, Paul tells us that very clearly. Uh, though uh, we're conscious of its own realm, the soul is conscious. Uh, Ecclesiastes 9, 5 and 6, Isaiah 63 and verse 16. And we even find this mentioned in Luke 23 and verse 43. Okay, so these scriptures are trying to teach us something. They're trying to teach us that, hey, death isn't all there is. It's not final. Don't think of it that way. And, of course, uh, we know that our body will be resurrected. It will be brought back from the dust from which it's gone in 1 Corinthians 15, 55 through 57. We will have great glory in the resurrection to be with the Lord. And when the Lord returns, he returns with his saints. Well, they're, they're asleep in the ground, are they not? No, the Spirit is, will, will be with them. Their body be, will be resurrected, and they'll be reunited with their body. Not hard to understand that. Let's let the Scriptures answer these things. It's not hard to understand that at all. We can find that mentioned in Thessalonians. Uh, uh, John 5, 28 and 29 14 verses 1 through 6, 1 Thessalonians 2, 19 through 20, John 8, 32, uh, 1 John uh, 2 and 21, and the list goes on and on to describing what we're talking about here. When Christ comes with all of his saints in 1 Thessalonians 3 and verse 13, the souls will be reunited with their bodies. We find that mentioned in 1 Corinthians 15, 35 through 37, as I mentioned. Life will be given to your mortal bodies. Romans 8, verse 11. But we won't be the same, we'll be as he was after he was resurrected. This, Paul says this mortal, this mortality, our body, shall put on immortality. We will be, we'll see him as he is and we shall be as he is. So, my friends, death is not final. Don't think of it that way. Death is not something to be feared unless you're living outside of Christ. Your body will rest. It will go back to the dirt and, or dust from which it was made. But it will be resurrected to newness of life. It will be resurrected to have a body of immortality. And you will be able to be with the Lord for all eternity. If what? If you obey the gospel, if you do what God has asked you to do, it's not hard to understand these things. As a matter of fact, Paul said very clearly, comfort one another with these words. 
death is not final. Those who are die, have died have not missed the Lord. They're going to be with the Lord just as you are. What matters is the choices we make in this life. Because the choices we make determine where our eternity will be spent. Will it be in heaven with God or will it be in torments in a place called hell? Prepare for the devil and his angels. Are we going to follow him? Or are we going to follow the Lord? Therein lies your decisions that you have to make in this world. I hope that you make the right choices. Understanding that you are already an eternal being inside of a fleshly body. Why you're here, why you're alive, why you can make choices, make good ones. Choose to follow God. Choose to obey the scriptures. Choose to do what God has told you to do, not what man's doctrines say. Just do what God says to do. Obey Him. Because He's already made everything possible for you to be with Him in all eternity. Thank you for listening to today's lessons. I hope I have helped you in some way. I look forward to seeing you next time. Bye-bye.